My name is Dr. Renee Lawrenson. I'm a Zimbabwean epidemiologist and I'm the director of Training and Research Support Center and um, one of the cluster leads and coordinators of work in the regional network for equity in health in East and Southern Africa. First being that we need, are going to need to deal with the inequality that existed before the pandemic that made us susceptible that is now being confronted around issues like vaccines, but in much wider, uh, in a much wider way. And, and of course, um, that will be as a consequence of the pandemic. Um, there's talk about a K-shaped response where those who are better off will be increasingly better off after the pandemic and those who are worse off will decline even further. And that means we need to look at investments in in, in what affects inequality, the, the, the incomes, employment and, and um, production systems, the food systems, the services, health, education investments that we make, the social protection systems, and of course the investments in the first years of life and in early child development that really set the long-term futures in our country. So we, we must look at the systems around that area of inequality. And the second aspect is to prevent and prepare for future pandemics. We know that the, that ecologies, our ecologies are what is breeding our pandemics, our production, consumption systems, our planetary health and our environments. And beyond developing the technologies to cope with these pandemics, we need to actually prevent them because otherwise we are just chasing them all the time. And that means looking much more closely at the community systems and the way we are bringing people in much closer contact with um, animal populations through through monocropping, through extractive industries, et cetera, um, so that we don't generate the risk of pandemics. And, and in our region, we are already confronting Ebola, anthrax. We have regular problems of cholera. We need to be, we need to live in a world where we are not constantly confronted by, by epidemics or pandemics due to ecological sources. And then finally, I guess what I want to point to, and it's relevant to the vaccine issue and the nationalism we've seen around it and the ethical and equity issues we're debating, is that we, we, we need to overcome the civilization deficit that we have fallen into. Our technologies are actually advancing ahead of our humanity. And I think the vaccine issue has really pointed to that, which means thinking about the values of collective interest and solidarity that go along with our scientific and te technological developments and the ethical principles that govern them. Um, thinking about the balance between the social, ecological, material issues in the way we move forward as a society so that we don't get such significant imbalances between these different areas. And then of course, respecting and listening to knowledge from different sources, not only from the kind of very, um, specific technology sources, but also from the ways in which these technologies affect and intervene in our societies and the ethical and values based nature of how we use them. So I think um, we need to overcome our crisis of civilization in as much as we are dealing with the climatic and pandemic crises as well. Rich countries, but also the communities inside the rich countries need to recognize that our futures are interdependent and combined and that you cannot be secure in one part of the world if another part of the world is highly insecure. In as much as we learned in the Industrial Revolution that inequalities within societies generate um, uh, problems for everybody. So I think we are, we are looking for the rich uh, the richer countries to 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 realize that we are working in an interdependent world and to exercise these more collective interests when we are making decisions. Um, and part of that is actually we need to recognize that Africa is actually a net exporter of wealth and resources uh, through the extractive sectors, through the use of biodiversity from our regions, etc. So we also need to be to understand the need for our countries in our region to reclaim the resources for health and to have more partnership based models rather than extractive models in the way we generate the production and consumption systems in our region and in the global region. And I think this is not just for, for us, it's for the global community as a whole, because we are escalating towards ecological climatic pandemic threats 
that we will not cope with unless we see ourselves in an interdependent world. Well, obviously, one of them is the TRIPS waiver. And I think the recognition of the need that distributed local production is the only way we are going to be able to secure access to essential health products.